A nationwide referendum is to be conducted on December 17 for citizens to decide if an entrenched clause in the 1992 Constitution, Article 55.3, needs to be amended to allow political parties participate in local government election. The government needs at least 40% of eligible voters turning out to vote and at least 75% voting in favor for its yes campaign to succeed. While the government and some civil society organizations are in support of a yes vote, the opposition NDC, some organizations, and a section of the National House of Chiefs are advocating for a no vote. Well, uh, we've, we've seen in very recent days uh, that the Asante Hinio 2482 to the second wants broader stakeholder consultation on the referendum. There are other stakeholders who are asking for uh, an intensified public education on this matter. Uh, today, in, uh, during the newspaper review, uh, we had the, a deputy information minister saying the president has yet to decide on this matter. So where are we really uh, with all the consultations going on? Uh, are we still looking at December 7? Are we still going out there to vote? Uh, and that's why we have in the studio a deputy local government minister who is also a member of parliament, for Cap himself. Uh, Obi Amwa is here to answer all the questions you can be involved in this conversation, send us WhatsApp messages as well. Good morning to you. Morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me here. Yeah. Is this still very confusing even for, for you where you sit in terms of, we talk about it, it comes back in different ways and we have to talk about it again? Well, for me, it's not confusing, but I think for some people, they're getting confused for various reasons. Um, what I would say is that there's been a setback. Setback in the sense that we seem to be agreeing in Parliament um, to amend Article 2431. That would have taken away the power of the President to appoint MMDCs so that MMDCs could be elected on universal adult suffrage. Um, our friends on the other side, even though at the committee stage had agreed that this could go on, when it came to the second reading, they made it clear that it had become more or less conditional, conditional in the sense that let's go for referendum first before we can we come and amend Article 2431. And then there should be other amendments that we, we, we want to know and see that it will, they will be put in place after the referendum. Now, when this issue came up, even though we argued that we thought the, the amendment of 2431, taking away the power of the president, would tell the whole world, would send a message to the whole world that that power has been taken away from the president. But in taking away that power from the president, the referendum is to decide whether political parties should be allowed to sponsor um, candidates who stand at the assembly elections, or they should still stay away. So that at least for political parties, they would have the message that the president has offered this. The MMDCs will now be elected. But he wants these MMDCs to be elected based on multi party democracy and based on individual parties choosing their candidates through their own mechanisms for such persons to stand at the general elections. Mm. Somehow, our friends on the other side didn't think. That, that should be the case. So as we speak, the 2431, which will take away the power of the president to appoint MDCs, mm. is still at the second reading stage. It's still at the what, second what reading it, stage. What does it mean when you say it's still at the second reading stage? What it means is that when you're passing a bill, you go through stages. There's a first reading, which means the bill is announced. When it's announced in parliament, the speaker refers the bill to the relevant committee in this case, because it's an amendment of the Constitution, it was referred to the um, Parliamentary Constitutional Legal Affairs Committee. 
So they brought their report. When they brought their report, it means we were at the second reading stage. Mm. So we were to debate the report. But for a normal bill, the simple majority will let the bill go to the next stage. But for amendment of a constitution, when it gets to the second reading stage, you need two thirds of members of parliament to agree that we should move beyond that. Mm. So we haven't voted yet okay. as to whether we should go beyond the second reading. Okay, but you've After debated. Second, we've debated. We, 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 everybody has everybody allowed to speak on the floor mm. uh, has made his point. Why didn't the vote take place? One, I, the speaker was the one who was supposed to put the vote, but he deferred it. He deferred it probably, okay. I had a sense that one, he thought maybe the house was not full. Two, he was... But there was a quorum. There was a quorum. Two, he was looking for a consensus. Because that's the person that he had, everybody had, until it got to the floor and the issue came up at the last moment. Mm. And since then, it's not that it's been just abandoned. Since then, there have been a series of talks and negotiations. In parliaments? In parliament and outside parliament. But not on the floor, because the issue hasn't come up but on the floor. But on the floor. In parliament and outside parliament, to the extent that for the minority side, they were led by the second deputy speaker to discuss this whole situation. Mm. And we seem to have come to a certain conclusion. Indeed, the attorney general and the majority leader were supposed to make statements on the floor as to how far we have come in agreeing to how this whole thing should be packaged. It was at the last point, indeed, those who were in the middle of all this were IDEC. So at the last point, IDEC said, having agreed with in Parliament that we talked about. I want to just read it out so that we can all follow. And then I have, I have a crucial question that I would ask after that. So 2431 says, there shall be no district, there shall be a district chief executive for every district who shall be appointed. And can we put that on the screen, please? Who shall be appointed by the president with the approval of not less than two thirds majority of members of the assembly present and voting at the meeting. And so this is, okay, let, let, me just, uh, let me just drop this and let me ask the now question can, that now I'm to be ask fair, you. Before, so we go on, gonna, mm -hmm. before we go on, to be fair to our friends on the minority side, what, some of the issues they brought were genuine issues, but we had come to a point where we said that we would follow up on that. For instance, they were saying that if you amend 2431, in the amendment two, four, three, three. That means the president can still remove these seats. But uh, the, the attorney general has listed all those things which will still be brought to parliament after gazetting for us to consider them, to assure them that indeed all those things too will come along. Shouldn't, they, shouldn't these have been brought on the table for a conversation? After, because after because the, if it's after, how sure are we that you indeed will do it? No, that after those things were raised, they were brought on the table. Okay. Except that you got to go through a process in amending it. You mm. have to desert it for three months. So, so my, if, you, my, my if you say that, do it before a referendum, that means you don't, you don't expect a referendum to take place. So my question is this. Clearly, from the ECIS own timetable and, and the way they, um, they've issued in terms of either what colors to use, the dates, the questioning, if you look at the timelines, we, we've not had enough time. Uh, that's, because that's from September to November now to December. If, if there are a lot of stakeholders, please wait for my question. There are a lot of stakeholders <laughs> who are calling for an extension, a suspension. Some are saying intensify the education. Uh, we have 20 days to December 17th. The adverts are still running. Are we going out there to vote or not? I've told you that until a decision is taken otherwise, we are still campaigning for the referendum. If you go to their districts, there are groups, various groups who are on radio, who are holding town hall meetings, who are doing all their programs. 
for referendum day is it my is 20 days enough yeah, it's for no, us to intensify what it we're is, already it doing it is enough it is enough but we shouldn't get the impression that the campaign has been for only the last three months education and everything has gone on for a long time and the, the average person will tell you that at least they've attended meetings and programs at which these issues were brought up. Mm. You in the media. M as maybe far back is as, the question. As far is as the question that we'll go and find when we get out there on December 17. Well, the, the question that we have not properly understood. No, the question is a legal question, and that is how it should be framed. But as to allowing political parties to sponsor candidates at the district level, it's been said over two years now. Mm -hmm. It's your yes and no that you're saying that all that has been said over these two years. Now, when you're going to vote, you would have to vote yes to mean that you agree that political parties should be allowed to sponsor candidates mm. at the assembly level. I got the impression or no, that you don't agree. Is the question, is the question in terms of I'm saying yes to the question or I'm saying no to the question that people didn't quite understand? That's why I've broken it down for you. Do you want political parties to sponsor candidates at the local level? Or you don't? And those who say they don't, they understand. And those who say yes, they understand. So your, the question may be a long question because that's a, what the constitution requires. Mm. But as to what, to be fair, what probably was confusing people was that whether the referendum was about going to elect MMDCs. Some had that impression. Who caused it? Some, no. Nobody caused it. Because, more or less, it was a package. And because... We, we, had, we had the president, uh, was it last month or two months ago, say to the people that oh, you're going oh, out there I've to vote, for test, instance. I've read a test. If you read a test as a whole, you can't just pick that small aspect and say, and the president has been one person who has spoken about this more... At major points, it's more than any official. And 99 out of 100, if you understood him very well, you wouldn't say that that thing which has been taken out is the one which is getting Ghanaians confused. No, that would I didn't be very say unfair. that. I didn't say that. If you look at... I'm saying that you, you said people had the impression that this is what we're going to vote for. And I'm just reminding you that the president said the same thing too. It's not... It's not it's not the president who has caused it. That's what I want to tell you. Yes. I'm, I'm saying, saying that, that. I'm not saying I'm the president saying caused our, it, our, but I'm saying he also repeated that. No, I don't agree with you. I'm saying that our initial explanation that the first step is to get 2431 amended so that MMDCs could be elected. And then we will go to referendum to ask whether in electing them and other assembly uh, members, political parties should sponsor the candidates, even though you may have independent or not. And I'm saying that it appeared that people were more interested in MMDCs getting elected under 2431. And then they felt probably that was also the referendum uh, issue. I'm saying that that could have created that situation where people would be more interested. I can tell you that if you don't manage this very well, if you don't manage this very well, one, people will say that, ah, if MMDC should not be elected, I'm not interested in the referendum. That's number one. Two, if the referendum will not take place, then I'm not interested in the assembly elections. And that's why do you why do you say that? Where are you getting that impression from? I'm getting the impression from several sources. For instance, even for civil society, the key civil society groups, they put it on paper. That it's a package. Let's get MMDC elected, but let's get political parties involved to bring some sanity. W what's to the, whole what's process. the difficulty? What's the challenge for those who say we can still have MMDCs elected? but not on political party basis. What's it's the difficulty in that? What's the challenge? Why can't we do that? For us who believe in sanitizing the whole system, we think that it's just adding another chaos to the whole chaotic situation. 
1992, when the constitution was being drawn, one thorny issue, which has become controversial, if you read Kwame Nawai, he has even put it in his book, was whether we can superimpose a multi-party system on a no-party system. Because the no-party system had been running since 1988 at the assembly level. And then there were those who were insisting that we should keep that no-party system in the constitution. And those who said, that no, now that we are going for multi-party, let's do multi-party at every level. Those who wanted a no-party system had their way. And then we have practiced this since 1993, so at least for 26 years under the constitution. It hasn't worked. It hasn't worked in the sense that, one, we are saying it's a no-party system, but the parties are hiding behind, doing what they can do, but not being effective. Take me, for example. Whether we like it or not, I'm a key person in my district as a political party leader. Now, the Constitution is saying that I cannot be seen to be endorsing anybody in the name of the party. To the extent that, even though the Constitution doesn't talk about individuals, if I should go around with any candidate, it will be concluded that the party is getting involved. Now, even where we want to sanitize the system by saying that ah, there are five people who have filed their nomination for this electoral area, all these five people are known members of my party. They are even office holders. Ideally, they should agree for one person to go. We don't have even that authority. You can only persuade them. And a lot have been persuaded. They have refused. They said, we'll go ahead and say it's non partisan So you end up getting five people from the same stock with the same ideas, with the same persuasion, where they could have allowed one person to go, at most two, mm -hmm. all jumping in, and the party has no control. And quality assurance. If you go to the assemblies, we could have done better than what we are doing. And we are saying that if this is a problem for us, and we want to cure it, then we should not add the election of MMDCs to it on this no party basis. Do you appreciate where the yes advocates are also coming from? The no the or yes. Fear, the fear. Uh, no yes. The no. Yes. The, the effects of politicizing this. That's the, that's the worst argument I can ever hear from said persons. That's the most unfortunate argument that anybody could make, especially from a political party. If you are a leader of a political party, you are telling me that multi party is divisive. Brings rancor, it divides. Corruption. Uh, it, it brings corruption. It brings everything. So it should not be sent down there. And what business do you have leading a political party? What business? It's the same argument that soldiers have made any time that they take over the country and say that parliament has been um, dissolved uh, and all these institutions have been abolished. Because from the time that we had one party state and Nkrumah, these same arguments were made. So how about the individuals who? do not belong to they political have, they parties. Have, they have a right to stand the, as independent. The, the fact that this limits, but you know how independent candidates have fared that is what, where political parties are allowed to take part in an election. That is what our constitution has made for us. It's a multi-party system. And they, 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 they recognize the key role of political parties in our democracy and governance. But it also allows those who want to stand as independent to go ahead. Why do isn't, you why do you that? bring a constitution of multi-party system and then you say that at the assembly level is no party? Isn't there a reason why the drafters of the constitution made this, you know, put it there that this it, is not? I see it's ideological. Ideological because uh, the drafters felt that um, multi-party system is not the best thing. And those who were then in government, who were running the state, were opposed to multi-party system. So they had their way in the constitution. And those of us who believe in multi-party system, we think that that wasn't the way to go. But and we, we have been survived with this for 25 years. We, we can still survive with it. But as to whether the local government system is working, it's another matter. So your argument is that the local government system would work better, would see a lot more progress if we make it 
political. My argument is that partisan. My argument is that the local government system can do better if one we make people show more interest in the local government system and people get more interested when political parties mobilize people. Would we get the quality of people my argument is that, that, would, that would lead the changes down there? My argument is that if we let the whole world know the functions of a district assembly and then parties will be pushed to send persons who can better perform their functions at the district assembly. With all due respect, with all due respect, I don't want to be misquoted or, or taken out of context. You go to assembly and people are cast elitists. Meanwhile, you're supposed to work with the local governance act. To the extent that they said, oh, you can use any language that you want to use in the assembly. Oh, it did. Our constitution has not put it anywhere that you have to be literate before you can even be a president or you can go to parliament. Our constitution hasn't put it that way. It's the same way at the assembly. But I'm saying that if you look at the functions of the assembly, <laughs> if you look at the functions of the assembly, you need a certain kind of human resource to let it work. That's, that's how come at the beginning, when M MPP had power for the first time in 2001, someone like Honorable Banredu, who was the Minister for Local Government, felt that the 30% should be a certain group of people who can enrich the work of the assembly. I was made a government appointee because of my legal background to see how I could use my, my legal knowledge to assist the assembly. But down the line, it's even overtaken by uh, political office holders, a uh, constituency uh, organizer here, the wife of the chairman of the constituency. And this is affecting the whole system. So if we are how to change the local governance system. This should be the first step. That's where the chiefs come in and say that they want third representation. Are you taking it out or are you keeping it? If you take it out, that means we may not be catered for. And our response is, we, don't want, we cannot take that decision now. That is why 242 in the, in the Constitution has not been touched, because we all have to agree on the composition of the assembly after these persons have been elected. Are we rushing this? The time has come. This is a president who believes in what we're doing. If he leaves and you don't get any other leader who thinks that his power should be shared, we are, we are back to square one. I want to activate the phone lines because I have the deputy minister here, maybe for about five minutes, if you've got questions that you still want to ask because it is us going out there. If nothing changes, uh, December 17th, to vote yes or no. Still have, uh, you're still not clear in your mind you want to ask him a few questions. You're open to it, right? Sure. Zero three zero two two one one six nine one or 2 You can give us a call now. Zero three zero two two one one six nine one or 2 Kindly give us a call. We're doing this in five minutes and then, and then we'll wrap up.